everyone, today's video is going to be the first in a series of hibernation videos. So this is something that I've been planning for a really long time and you guys have been asking for for ages, but it's such a huge topic and I don't want to rush into anything and miss out important information. So I will be creating a series of separate videos. So these videos will be on topics like what hibernation is, why or why not to hibernate your tortoise, pre-hibernation checks, winding your tortoise down for hibernation, different hibernation methods, including how I personally choose to hibernate my tortoise, waking tortoises up and overwintering. So I'm gonna put these all together in a playlist on my channel once they're all uploaded so that you can find them easily. So just a quick disclaimer, I'm not an expert. I only have experience with one tortoise, but I have done a lot of research over a variety of different sources. And I've hibernated Sheldon quite a few times before, but please do your own research as well, especially if you have a different species to the species that I own. So my research has mainly been focusing on Mediterranean tortoises, but specifically Herman tortoises. So the Mediterranean species are tortoises of the genus Testudo. So these include the Greek, the Herman, the Marginated, the Russian and Egyptian tortoises. So today's video is going to be about hibernation, brumation and estivation, what they mean and what the difference is between them. So the term hibernation comes from a Latin word that I will never be able to pronounce, which means winter. So the definition of hibernation obviously varies slightly depending on what source you read, but it generally is a term used for a state of inactivity and metabolic depression in animals during the winter. So the term hibernation was historically used as a general term for any animal going into a period of dormancy in the winter. And this was until 1965 when American zoologist Wilbur Mayhew suggested that it seems advisable to have one term to designate to winter dormancy in heterotherms and another for that in ectotherms. So he suggested that the term hibernation had been used for heterotherms particularly, so it made sense to retain that term for them, and he proposed the new term brumation from the Latin bruma, meaning winter, to indicate winter dormancy in ectotherms. So since then, people started to adopt the term brumation to distinguish some differences between hibernating mammals and brumating reptiles. So these two terms are often used interchangeably, but generally the word brumation is used more frequently for snakes and lizards, and the name hibernation is used more frequently for colonians. So hibernation and brumation are very similar. They are both periods of dormancy, which is triggered by the day length shortening and a drop in temperature, in which the animal becomes less physiologically active and their metabolic processes slow down. This is a survival technique that certain animals have developed to cope with a lack of food and harsh temperatures in their natural environment. So mammals and reptiles will both eat more to build up fat before winter, but reptiles also build up high levels of glycogen. So glycogen is a form of sugar which is stored in the muscles, which they use for energy. So mammals rely upon their fat reserves to survive the winter, whereas reptiles mostly rely on this glycogen. So for reptiles, their fat reserves play a bigger role in reproduction, supporting egg development and mating activity. So some reptiles actually need to go through brumation in order to start their reproductive processes. So another difference between mammals hibernating and reptiles brumating is that mammals will sleep the entire duration of their dormancy period, and generally reptiles will not. Their dormancy has periods of activity, so if the weather is mild, they can take advantage of this opportunity to go out and bask and drink, though they won't ever go very far from their chosen hiding spot or den. Another difference is the animal's oxygen requirements. So mammals do slow their respiration rates down during hibernation, but they still require a certain threshold of oxygen present, whereas reptiles can actually handle lower oxygen levels. So what is estivation? So this again comes from a Latin word meaning summer, 
and it's similar to brumation but occurs when animals go into a dormant state because the weather conditions are very hot and dry. So this often happens in places that experience droughts during the summer. So estivating animals may wake up and become active again if the temperature drops or if it starts to rain and they're considered to be in a fairly light state of dormancy which can rapidly reverse if conditions change. So again, it's another way that animals have evolved to depress their metabolic processes in order to survive harsh climates. It allows them to conserve energy and retain water in their bodies. So a couple of examples of reptiles that estivate in the wild include desert tortoises, crocodiles and salamanders. So I really hope you enjoyed me sharing some of my research about the different terms and where they originated from. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. So keep an eye out for my next tortoise hibernation series video. Like I say, I'll put all of these in a playlist on my channel so you'll be able to find them really easily. But please feel free to do your own research and share your findings with me. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will speak to you guys soon. Bye!